Hello and welcome to this video against Petit Copri and he has to suffer because I just lost again against some some damn cheater. I'm pretty sure it was a cheater, but you you cannot be totally sure and I kind of I didn't know. I stopped the video somewhere and uh, I, I simply I don't know. The whole account looked fishy. The game looked fishy. I don't know. Let's see what I can do against Petit Copri. This is, I am, I think Kiliris is the name, right? Kiliris, right. So what now? Bishop to f3. He, probably, he will probably go some g5 stuff. Hmm, interesting. Okay, I will I need some counter play, so go with c six. The question is where now? Yeah, going back. Yeah, maybe go back, but I would like to play more actively, so I go here. If he takes it, this costs quite some time. It might still be good for him, but I'm not a huge fan of playing back to e eight or, or something like that. I can take it, but I have knight d3 and so on. An interesting idea for white is to take the knight and then take h5. I have got two bishops then, but the worst pawn structure ever. Okay, he goes for that. Check. That I don't really think is that brilliant. If I take there, queen e2, I guess. Yeah, but I have a couple of options. Queen to b6 blunders the queen, unfortunately. Otherwise, it would be would be a good move. Hmm, I can go knight f4. Or I'll just stay there. Let, let's let's think about this for a moment. Queen e2, I have knight f4 anyway, so maybe this one. Lending some possible support after this, yeah, and now I go back. So if he takes, it would open up the long diagonal. Okay, if I go a3 here, or queen a5, hmm, not sure. Queen a5, I guess, yeah, for queen to b4. This is the King's Indian after all, you have to play as actively as possible. King's Indian is really an opening that forces you to be active. If you play passive moves and, and hang around, you, you usually are just worse. Doing the correct <laughs> active moves though is a is a difficult thing, so I'm not saying that I'm doing a good job here, just try. Let's see. Yeah, how does he defend C4? I don't know how. Not sure if it is such a big deal if I get to take it, but okay, so here I can take C4, I can take, I think I'll take here, right? There's nothing wrong with that. I might have Bishop A6 now or Bishop E6. One problem is if he takes on f4 and the diagonal opens up, there's always a3. Um, getting at the c3 knight. Yeah, 
Yeah, against some accounts it's difficult to play with when you have this cheating suspicion right away. Um, I had a long string of cheaters from the UAE, from Kuwait, from Dubai or whatever, yeah, all those Bahrain, all those Gulf states. I really don't know why, I have no idea, but it happened a lot. There were lots of cheating incidents that never got to be on a video. And those countries, they really feature a lot there. So whenever I get, uh, wow, an opponent from, from one of those countries, I, I'm, I'm kind of suspicious. So I want this, by the way. Okay, I, I'll do this, come on. <laughs> this looks like a good reply. Let's not waste time. Attacking the rook and the pawn. This looks okay, right? This should be good for black. Anything better? No. I'm a pawn up, right? Or not? Yes, I'm a pawn up. So bishop a6, no. It's still kind of kind of annoying here, this this stuff. I'd like to go f5. I think I'll take and play f5 here. Getting this super big center. But take with the rook. Uh, 94 is kind of annoying. Bishop takes then. Yeah, rook g1, this is not great. Yeah, coming knight g1, uh, knight g5 is annoying. Hmm. Let's see if I can attack b2 here. And I have bishop f5 as well. I hope I'm not overlooking some kind of a wacky checkmate. That would be hugely embarrassing. So, um, what now? He wants to go knight g5. Is there any way to prevent this completely? Mm, probably not. Check here. Yeah, but close. It's a bit close yeah. to that. I can almost prevent it completely. I mean, here you can actually move the rook. It's not. It's not a mate. So check. Check. And rook f two. I was thinking. Don't see a mate. I'm threatening bishop e2 check, which is kind of nice. White resigns. Pooh, tough game. Yeah, I'm not sure about the opening at all, but it was a typical complicated um, King's Indian fight. Yeah, so a5, this one. Yeah, knight h5 is, of course, this is a very debatable decision. But I didn't want to play passively. And here, if he allows knight f4, I'm in good shape. So he is forced to take it. I think the critical continuation is what the computer is giving. Taking the second knight and take here. This is probably good for white. I mean, my pawn structure is a mess and I'm a pawn down. And it's not clear what I'm doing. I can go here, but let's say he castles long. Uh, it, it's somewhat messy, but it's good for white. Yeah? This is probably a key moment of the game. Check. I think here I have a decent position. Went back to e2, running into this, and now he decided to keep it on the board. 
yeah, I don't know, a couple of options. I can take d5 now or this. I think this is also a possible way. Knight e2, queen b4. An interesting option for white is to play h5. <laughs> Something along these lines. This is very funky with the, with the bishop on h8. And computer gives white half a pawn, which is very hard to to yeah to interpret what what this actually means. <laughs> the line runs like this: takes takes, bishop takes pawn takes, and rook h4. And Check. this is the line that, Check. and now it's going down to zero point three. Wow. Yeah, super complicated ending. It's equal material, but uh, completely, um, yeah, as, as non-symmetrical as you can get, tough to say. And the game he took, and now played knight d5, and this is, just doesn't work here, yeah, because of knight takes d5. This, this, yeah. I'm not sure if I played in the best possible Check. way, but the engine is always giving Check. me two or three pawns, so. Check. Yeah, I think it's okay. The engine didn't didn't show any um, any uh, spike in White's favor, so I probably have played it uh, reasonably well. Um, it's a, it's a very a very tough kind of uh, game in the King's Indian. If White plays that ambitiously with G4 and H4. This is um, a lot like I play it, and I know that these positions are super double-edged. Okay, well, thanks for watching.